what is the best material. They all have kind of pros and cons, things to think about and things to consider. And we're gonna go quickly through kind of the pros and cons and then we have a list of questions we're gonna pick out of a box back here and kind of real world, hey, I'm trying to do this, what do you recommend? Right, so use cases and then common questions we've got over the years. Sure, so let's get started. So we've got King Starboard, we've talked a lot about Starboard, so I'm gonna go pretty quick. Think of it as a you know kind of rigid cutting board material. Um, it's a high density polyethylene. Uh, it's really kind of been popularized over the last two decades here and largely replaced uh, teak. Some of the pros of it is it's very easy to work with. You can use standard woodworking tools, pretty easy to clean, easy to machine. It, uh, you know, it comes in a sheet form, so the nice thing about that is unlike wood where if you're working on a larger project you have to figure out how to lay up multiple boards, uh, you're able to plan your project and, and cut parts out of it very easily. No it's grain direction too, you talk about laying up boards, right? Oh yeah. So yeah, that, that would that. be a, a, another thing that is an advantage is that you know, you, you've got a larger project, you don't have to lay them up and there's, there's no grain direction to worry about. Sure, and, and you know it's got a lot of great things about it. One of the limitations of it, it is is that it is less rigid than wood. If you're even plywood, if you're used to working with wood, you're going to need to support starboard a little bit more. And I like to tell people, you know, hey, if you took a sheet and you laid it up against uh, the wall in your garage, you know, it's hot outside. You came back in 30, 45 minutes. It's going to have taken some shape. You know, so it's something to think about when you're planning your project. That if it's structural, you need to make sure it has the right support or that it's hinged on the right side so that it doesn't droop on you and start to take some shape. So with starboard, there's a couple of other kind of derivatives of it. And the first one is starlight. I won't go too much into it because we had a whole show on it here recently. You probably can't tell the difference from where you're sitting there, but uh, starlight is actually effectively the same material as starboard, but when it's extruded that there's a blowing agent added. So it actually has a cellular edge. And the nice thing about that is it is less expensive and it's less uh, heavy, but the negative with that is that cellular edge can collect dirt and it is impossible to remove that dirt. So we don't use it uh, internally here on any projects where the edge is at all visible. So we use it on the shell of a tackle box. Um, you know, or we use it on maybe the drawer bottoms inside of a storage unit where you don't see that edge at all. Uh, so that's another one there. And then we have uh, anti-skid. So anti-skid, again, you probably can't see from here. I'll switch over to the screen view here. I've got some anti-skid up. And you can see it is, again, the same thing as King Starboard. It's just that when it's extruded, uh, there's a texture that's rolled into it. Kind of embossed, right? Totally. Yeah, absolutely. It kind of looks almost like the EVA foam you know, embossed that you kind of see. And the, the nice thing about it, of course, is you have uh, more traction. So it's used a lot of times on uh, maybe uh, step pads or um, swim platforms. Any decking, yeah, right? Any decking. <clears throat> you know, the, one of the things that I would add to the starboard is the fact from a from a gluing, right? So you, yep. you're not not able to use adhesives. Um, you know, it, it everything that we do here, we we, we mechanically fasten. So it's it's also tricky to bend. Um, you can bend it, but it is uh, a little bit trickier to bend. Um, so certainly something to keep in mind. Which is actually a good segue into the next material. Acrylic. Right, so acrylic. So probably everyone, when they think about acrylic, thinks about uh, transparent acrylic. You know, it's used on point of purchase displays and fish tanks, really anywhere. But there also is opaque acrylic. And we use a lot of acrylic in uh, you know, all kinds of different applications. Doors, uh, dash panels, live well lids, yeah. you know, all kinds of stuff. Now the advantage of it is it's glossy which uh, I think most people would say is a little bit of a higher end look compared to Starboard, which is matte. Um, but some of the disadvantage of it is price and ease of uh, working with it. So I actually had my team downstairs polished. I don't think you're gonna be able to see, but one of these edges is polished uh, and the other edge is just rock cut. You Maybe they can see, see it. it a little bit better here on the, the clear, so I'll on get the, the right angle. This is, you'll see this edge has been polished and finished. You can almost see through the material. Um, where you know you look at the rock cut and we may want to throw back up to the website to see I think we've got a really good picture of you know you can kind of see it here where it's unfinished and then again polished here and I think on the acrylic page let's see we may have a rock cut versus not yeah Perfect. yeah kind of rock cut edges versus a high gloss finish awesome so for the most part anything we're building with acrylic we are polishing after the fact if the edge is going to be visible yeah so that's a uh, important thing to keep in mind. Um, other things, you know, you do have to have acrylic drill bits if you're uh, drilling pilot holes into acrylic. 
Um, so it's not like you can just walk out back and grab the same tools that you'd use for woodworking. It's a little bit more involved in that way. But you can bend it, you can glue it, um, and it looks really nice. So it's certainly an option when you're working on a project. Yeah, and, and to that point, right, you know, we, we looked at the advantage of starboard to acrylic. You know, acrylic, number one, is more expensive and more difficult to, to work with. So the, the goofs, the oops, you know, it, it, it's not just, you know. It's amplified. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So. Cool. So, you know, one that we wanted to add in here, which is probably less uh, you know, obvious from a marine standpoint, and I'll flip back over to the view of us here, is uh, Corian. Now, Corian works very much like acrylic. Um, it uh, you know, just has, a, of course, you know, different textures, and there's literally hundreds of different textures. And I should say solid surface as opposed to Corian, because we do have LG High Mac colors as well. But uh, if you were working on a wet bar or any type of countertop, um, Corian is a very good option and we do uh, we fabricate a lot of Corian and can help you with that or uh, we have a lot of videos on working with Corian we've been seaming it and gluing up buildups so you know there's a uh, you know, maybe an atypical you wouldn't think of material but certainly an option as well mostly countertops right for the most part countertops I unless there was like accent pieces it, much less popular mostly countertops awesome yeah so we'll uh, we'll move over here actually we'll start with the uh, expanded PVC so you know, one of the things we want to note is this is PVC, like a common PVC you would see in an irrigation pipe that's actually been extruded into a sheeted, sheeted material. Um, this is very light in weight. Uh, applications that we're using this for here in the marine industry is more for upholstery substrate. So, you know, my personal story is, or personal use case, is that I had a live well lid in front of my console. This is the substrate that they then put the foam and, you know, wrapped it in the vinyl that sits on top, and then there's a piano hinge that runs along. You know, my seat was probably you know this wide so that worked really well because it didn't have to span a long distance it isn't as as rigid as a starboard so it, it does need to be supported it's less rigid than starboard and even less rigid than starlight which Correct. is a step in that direction and very similar to starlight is that you know when they're when they're extruding it they're adding that blowing agent which adds to that lightness but again the the, the difficult part is that that's going to have a, a cellular edge sure. so that's going to you know attract dirt over the years you wouldn't use this in a case where it was you know exposed again it's more of a hidden application <coughs> for the kusa uh, this is actually a, a material that's picked up a lot of traction in the past couple of years you know we've seen a lot of growth with this and the big question we ask when somebody calls in and says well why would I use that over marine grade plywood and the, the response back is do you ever want to do it again right sure. so this material you know, they, they claim it's 99.9% .9 water resistant. It's a story not on the whole truth. Someone put a, a sample in a coffee can in water and took it out like yeah, five years later. Five years. It weighed the same. It weighed the exact same. So it's not going to retain any water. Um, you know, use applications we're seeing for this is a lot of coring material, stringers, transoms, decking. You know, we, a lot of people will call us over the years and ask, you know, should I use starboard? I'm looking to, you know, add this area where I'll be standing on. We don't necessarily recommend it because at the point that you're going to use starboard and add an aluminum stiffener, which is necessary when you're spanning a larger area, you, know, you just go with the CUSA. Yeah, or redoing your whole deck. You know, I added CUSA very quickly after we launched Boat Outfitters because we had people calling in saying, hey, I want to buy uh, five sheets of King Starboard because I want to redo my deck. And I'm going, hold on, right? Wrong. It, it, it's <laughs> going gonna, gonna to feel spongy even if it works. Uh, I don't know anything about what supports you have underneath it, how close those supports are together. This is super rigid super super rigid material um you know it is unfinished right i mean you can even see that i think there's like some spray yeah, you saw me like clear corner. my hands off there you know it's fiberglass it's got right. woven fiberglass in it so you know, we recommend using gloves yeah and and you know you're gonna need to paint it you're gonna need to carpet over it upholster it uh, fiberglass over it it's not a material that you would ever use uh as like the the finish this is the aesthetic of what i'm going to look at but from a rigidity durability standpoint it is dynamite yeah, I think one to one from a plywood standpoint, this is going to be a, a good solution for you. The two things that I would note is <coughs> that it seems that it's lighter than a sheet of plywood, right? Based it's off of the thickness, I think it's thirty percent lighter. It's thirty yeah. percent lighter. Um, you know, you when you're replacing it, you want to try to find the equivalent. If you had half inch marine grade ply, you want to go to half inch marine grade or uh, kusa. 
the one thing that, that we note is that the screw retention isn't necessarily as strong as marine grade plywood, but there's an option for that where you'll use a T-nut to fasten it and still have that kind of more of a through bolt option than drilling directly into the CUSA. You know, that, that's a really good point. And since we're talking about material selection, we should probably reiterate what you're saying there. When it comes to, and we get all the, the, the time people ask, okay, I'm re maybe I'm redoing a transom, maybe I'm redoing a deck. Um, what thickness of CUSA board do I need based off of how far apart my spanners are? And the answer is put back in the same thickness of the, of the plywood that you took out. You know, your, uh, the engineers that designed your boat you know, did the research to determine how thick that material need to, needs to be. And the only thing we can say with certainty is that this is stronger than plywood. So if you go back into it with the same thickness, you're going to be safe. Um, we really uh, are very hesitant to consult on going any thinner or what the recommendation is, but we can tell you that if you're matching the same thickness as plywood with CUSA, you should be good to go. And that's a good, you know, for, for a transom, people you'll see where they've laid up, you know, three, three half inch pieces of plywood, and mm -hmm. they'll ask us, what can I do? You can do the same thing. You yep. can use three half inch pieces or the CUSA. Nice thing is it's going to come in an inch and a half thickness, right? So you're able to just go back in there with that same thickness and not have as much labor involved. And again, the lifespan of this, you're not, you're not going to be redoing it. Um, last piece we're going to go through is Teak. You know, our parent company, Teak Isle. Uh, you know, this is this is where we really made our name. Um, you know, as Andrew mentioned, you know, two decades ago, we were one of the first adopters of King Starboard, and through that, you know, have really found the niche in the marine industry to provide high quality parts. Um, you know, at, that that aren't going to need as much maintenance. So you know, I think the the easiest advantage, and you can see this piece of teak here, is it's beautiful, right? I mean, we, we source very high quality teak that, you know, it it's something that from an aesthetic standpoint, I think stands out amongst all of these. You know, the, the disadvantage to this is that, you know, it's a little bit more difficult to work with, right? You've got somebody that really, to make it look this nice, you've got to know how to lay boards up, find out grain direction, um, and then, you know, lifetime span of it, is going to be the maintenance. There's a lot of, you know, you either choose to, to, you know, leave it natural, oil it, um, or even possibly, you know, sealing it that you're going back and stripping that varnish off over the years and refinishing it. Um, so again, I, I think that the, the goods are that it's beautiful. The bad is that there's a lot of maintenance involved over the years. Yeah, you know, it's expense funny. too. I mean, it's for sure, probably for yeah. the most expensive. Right, we, yeah, which has actually changed over the last two decades. It used to be the least expensive. You know, it's funny, teak can be the prettiest thing on the boat or the, the ugliest thing on the boat, depending on if you've maintained it, right? So, and there's a lot of times that you look and you go, oh, that looks, that looks bad. You can tell no one's really maintained that. Um, but I would never argue with someone who said I want teak on the boat because it, it well maintained, it, it, it does look, look beautiful and it's always a valid option and we sell a lot of teak if that's what you'd like to do on your project. Cool. So let's give them the use cases. Let's do it. Let's see. Let's get the questions. All right. Andrew's so up first. So we went, we went through and uh, you know, pulled some questions that are common questions that our customer service team said, hey, you know, when, when people are calling and they're going, what material should I use? A lot of times this is an application example. So we'll see if we can stump us. All right. Here we go. All right. First question is, I'm upgrading my electronics, but my dash now has a bunch of different holes. Uh, you know, this is a case of it's re-rigging as well. Sure. Repowering. I need to get back to a flat surface. How can I? What, what's the best material to use to be, uh, install my new my new controls or my new my new units? Sure. So, I mean, the first thing to consider is the fact that, of course, this is going to be visible material, right? You're, this is what you're putting on your dash. So you really only have two options for the most part, and that would be starboard or acrylic. So starboard is going to be matte finish, where acrylic is going to be glossy. Uh, both are going to be you know, functionally uh, equal. Both will serve the purpose. We found that for the most part on dash panels, people are doing acrylic because it matches the uh, you know, gloss of your fiberglass, but it also matches the gloss of your electronics. And typically they're doing black acrylic because the black acrylic, again, matches the electronics and matches the housing. So my recommendation for that would be acrylic, but starboard, if you wanted to try to save uh, a little bit of money, is also a viable yeah, option. absolutely. All right, let's see. Do. Ooh. I'm replacing a wooden bench seat in an old whaler. I'd like to replace it with a material that will last forever. Yeah, so, you know, for the forever comment, you know, if, if, if you're using teak or any type of wood well maintained, that could last forever, but if you're not maintaining it, it's not. You know, we, we actually sell a kit that we developed for a, for a 13 whaler that's made out of starboard. 
again with that material you know you're if you're spanning that distance you need some form of a stiffener in place um, but you know my recommendation for that of course would be to use starboard um, again going back to wood is always an option and, and gives it that real vintage look um, but there is there's going to be added maintenance involved sure yeah I, I agree right because the rigidity you have problems with starboard so you would need some kind of stiffener so I, I would say say one is wood or starboard the only thing you could maybe do is cruciboard if you've but got you'd glassing have to, experience well it, you'd have to you probably could get away with painting it like mm -hmm. painting it with the tough coat um, but I would probably go with either go back with wood again or or do starboard with some stiffeners cool my windshield is crazing and needs to be replaced any material recommendations so you know to explain crazing for anybody that's watching this that doesn't know, and I didn't know until I started working here, um, you know, I, I had a boat with a windshield that had what looked like it was like spider crack Cracking all on within. the inside almost. Yes, yeah. not on the outside. It wasn't surface level, but inside it started like cracking, and I couldn't see through that windshield. So sure. in that case, what, what would we recommend from a replacing a windshield <clears throat> standpoint? Yeah, so if you're replacing your windshield that's crazed, it, it is acrylic, uh, it's not glass. So, you know, given the fact that the windshield has to be transparent, your only real option is to go back again with acrylic. Um, you know, the, the big thing to understand, and I'm glad that, that we had this question in here, is that the major cause of crazing in acrylic is using ammonia cleaners, uh, specifically Windex, popular one that has ammonia. So you want to be really diligent if you replace it with uh, a, acrylic that you don't use ammonia cleaners in the future. One thing to keep in mind is we talked about transparent acrylics. I'll pull it up here. Um, is there are some other tinted acrylics as well? So obviously this is a completely transparent acrylic, but we have some that has green edge, so it looks like glass, and then we have a variety of different of increasing uh, visibility, uh, you know, tinted acrylics. So. Yeah, that, we actually we did a segment here that's available on our channel as well. If you guys subscribe, um, that we kind of go through the, you know, I've I've got a, a cracked, crazed windshield. I'm trying to refix this old boat up, and we we go in the ins and outs. So I'd encourage Spoiler anybody alert, watching you're this. You're in a bad place. <laughs> <laughs> so, so take take a check out on that video. Cool. All right, next one. All right, I want to make a bow filler cushion for my boat. It's going to get upholstered, but I want to know what material options I should use for the base. Sure. So, you know, there's again a couple different options here. You know, I, I can probably think of three options. Um, you know, we, we do this actually for, for a couple different builders here over the years. Uh, we've, we've made these. And individual boaters. I know this is a project that's pretty common on the boat outfitter side if yeah. you're retrofitting. I, I remember growing up, we used to take our boat out and we used to, you know, camp in the boat at different reservoirs out west. Sure. And, you know, Someone would, would sleep on the two day seats that folded out and you know the kids would try to go up front and having that bow filler was nice to tuck in there and give us a, a nice bed to sleep on at night. Um, you know, from a material standpoint, I, I know that we've built them out of starboard in the past, but again, it needs to be supported with a stiffener. Um, that would be probably the, the not necessarily the least expensive, but uh, an end use where you're not gonna have a cellular edge. Uh, you would go with starboard, or if you didn't care because it wasn't visible, you could go with a starlight with a stiffener as well. Um, you could use marine grade plywood. You know, you see people that, that are basically the same way that you're kind of building a leaf for the table, right? You, you insert that into that area, and then you get a nice cushion to go on top of it. Uh, the other option, of course, is kusa that you would, again, want to finish. Um, you, Which, you if it's being upholstered, you're good there, right? Right. I mean, the, the, big, the big thing is you know, when, when you're not seeing the material, specifically when you're not seeing the edge of the material, it opens up a lot of material options. Sure. So like you say, you could do starboard with a stiffener, you could do star light with a stiffener. Mm -hmm. If it's small enough, you could do pro board with a stiffener maybe. Um, but I, I would agree that probably in, for most practical, in most practical use cases, you're either gonna do wood and say, that's fine, I know I'm gonna have to replace it in three, four years, right. or you're gonna do CUSA board and spend you know probably two three times the amount on the, the material and be like you know in good shape forever cool all right the wood has been rotting for a while now on my sun deck engine cover uh, it's basically the the area in the back of the boat that on an inboard where you lift it up and you'd have access okay. to the inboard motor um, I'm going to bite the bullet and replace it what material should I use uh, to make sure that this doesn't happen again? So this one's very similar to the last one. I, I would probably double down on maybe avoiding starboard because there's you know heat in that area. 
and probably would would push really hard for either Kusa board or going back with with plywood. Again, I would like we talked about before. I would use the same thickness of material of your existing uh, you know cushion. Yeah, because it's for weight, right? I mean, you see a right. lot of people that have these Structure. style of boats like a Baja. That people are are back there, you know, sunning on the sun deck. Sure, on the sun deck. Yeah. <laughs> Coup de All right, let's see. All right, I have teak trim pieces around the bottom of my console and around my rod box. I'm tired of oiling and trying to maintain it. At this point, it just looks old. What are my options for a replacement? It's a great question. Uh, you know, I, I, I feel confident that this is really where Boat Outfitters has, has made a name for itself. Um, you know, you got a lot of really cool old boats out there that, that, you know, just like Andrew said, teak's awesome on a boat. When it's not maintained, it's not. Um, you know, we, we, we in, in that case, you could go back and add teak back in there. Uh, if you're looking for something that has a lot less maintenance, you know, Boat Outfitters has been known for somebody to send us over, uh, you know, their their old teak, and we can digitize that teak and send them a replacement for it that that looks good and is going to look good for years to come. Yeah, and I mean, starboard from a material standpoint is is my go-to there. And from a do-it-yourself project, you know, again, remember one of the big advantages is that it's not really very, or it, it, it's pretty easy to work with, and your standard woodworking tools will work fine. It becomes a little bit more challenging with, um, you know, trim pieces and stuff like that, where you've got, um, you know, some different mills in the back so that it recesses into this, uh, you know, the opening I'm picturing, like rod boxes and stuff like sure. that. Um, but you know. Maybe acrylic, but yeah. not really because it's thin and the acrylic can crack. You wouldn't want to do thin trim pieces. And there's some expense there as well. Yeah. It, well, yeah, polishing expense. Yeah. It, starboard's your go-to for that case. Awesome. All right. How many more we got? I think two more. Two more. I am replacing my speakers, and the footprint of the new speaker doesn't match the old one. I've got this discolored portion of fiberglass where the old one sat. And I'd like to create some type of a shim or a dapper adapter to cover the discolored section and mount the new one. So, you know, I think this is the case where you see, just like most technologies, we, we get further advanced, a lot of things are going smaller. In this case, a speaker, right? Something that would produce good sound. You know, see like the, the Bose home entertainment system went from being, you know, these big tall speakers and a big receiver now to a, you know, a little Bose uh, speaker in your house that sounds sure. better than that did. So I, I, I can see where this is a, a pretty good use case. And uh, you know I would go back to back starboard on this. Um, you know, acrylic is also a viable option actually now that I think about it. So if you were doing a trim it, kind of an adapter plate like this, your starboard is going to be the easiest to work with. It's going to be the least expensive. Um, it, again this is visible so starboard or acrylic are really your only option. Um, Advantages of acrylic over starboard would be that you're not having to mechanically fasten it. You can use an adhesive for uh, the acrylic if you wanted, in that case, kind of to, to glue that trim ring in place and then be able to you know screw in your speaker to that so you don't have visible screw holes through both of them, right? Yeah, that's completely fair. Yeah, and so you know, starboard acrylic, like you said, price and uh, installation options are the only thing to think about, you know, but either would work. Cool. Last right. one. Last one. Oh, it looks like we got some questions piling up here from the comments too. Good Come job, in. guys. Uh, my transom has some soft spots, and I fear I have rot. I'd like to replace the transom myself. What material should I use? Yeah. So I, I think this is where Kusa would be my number one recommendation. Um, you know, we we really have kind of built a name with you know doing a couple different segments uh, on on TV that that you know. When replacing a transom, like we discussed earlier, you're going to go back in with the same thickness. The advantage of this is that you know, you're not going to have to refinish that transom over and over. That's a big project. You know, you're, you're, you're taking off all of your your steering, your controls. You're you're basically you know repowering that boat at that you're point. You're pulling out all the fiberglass, chipping all the fiberglass. Everything's done. Nasty, dirty job. You know. You're, you're cutting a big hole in a boat, not but, just a hole, a but, big one. But, but plywood is a viable option, yep. right? I mean, so, I mean, would you agree that they have two options, go back in with the same plywood or a material like Crucible? Absolutely. Yeah. And the reality is, is do you want to do it again in three to five years, which maybe you do. I mean, maybe, maybe you're selling the boat, right? Sure. Um, but, because uh, it is a fair amount more expensive. I mean, Crucible board is probably going to be three, four times as expensive as, um, you know, the plywood, but you're never going to have to do it again. Right, zero rot. So, awesome. Let's check out some of the things. Let's see, how hard is it to polish the acrylic edges? You want to take that one? Yeah. So, I mean, we have kind of a a, a system here that um, 
has been developed over the years. It's not it's not terribly difficult. Um, you know, I, generally with the same thing with coring is that you want to be able to sand down and then go back and use a like a polishing wheel with a polish. And we sell an acrylic polish. Absolutely. And we have a, an adapter for your uh, drill. drill. Yep. Yeah. So you know that the, you you come back and you you know sand this and possibly wet sand it just like you do on a gel coat of a boat and you, you, you'd wet sand it with finer and finer grit sandpaper and then using our Boat Outfitters branded acrylic polish be able to go back through with that drill uh, buffer and be able to bring this to a nice finish. Yeah, there's work there, it's, it's not impossible. Um, let's see the next one. Could you make one of your tackle or drawer units on your website out of CUSA board to save on the weight? That's a good question. So we have done something somewhat similar. Let me see if I can find, I don't know if I have it on the website. I'll switch back over. I might let you guys down here though. <laughs> Let's see, plastic sheet, CUSA board. Do, 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 do. I don't have the pictures of it. Let me see. I will post, um, let's see if I can link some pictures down in the comments after the fact. We actually did, was it a, it was a Land Rover, I believe. Uh, someone brought out a, a Land Rover that they had taken out all the, you know, the insides out of it, and we built a variety of different uh, furniture pieces. We actually built a, uh, it was a slide out uh, fridge, uh, all different kinds of drawers that face different directions, even ones that went up over the wheel well to make sure we were maximizing the usable area. Mm -hmm. And it was 100% fabricated out of, uh, out of CUSA board. Now, again, you have to finish it, right? So this individual, this customer ended up taking it and getting it uh, rhino linered uh, over it, and, and it turned out really nice. The one negative is he, he had to kind of chip away some stuff. We, we didn't figure out just how uh, thick that rhino liner would be once you, you sprayed it and put the whole thing back in. But my understanding is it turned out real nice once it was all done and, and in place. So it's possible, it is not practical. Like I mean, you have to have a specific reason why you want to do that um, from a weight saving standpoint. I would advise you if you're super sensitive to weight and want to talk to us about that, you're better off uh, trying to figure out how to do you know most of the shell out of the box out of uh, Starlight or an expanded PVC. So yes, but but no would be my answer to that question. Cool. Ooh, I left us on the wrong thing here. Let's switch back over. <clears throat> cool. So you know, with that, you know, please let us know in the comments if you have any other questions. Give us some of these hypotheticals like we talked about. You know, hopefully this can be a great reference going forward for any, hey, what material should I use for this application? Of course, you know, every, every work day here, we've got a team of people over there, boat outfitters that are willing to answer these questions and talk through your project. Um, if you have any other questions or any other topics you'd like to see us discuss, please post in the comments. Thanks and have a great day.